Cowdown Stadium here on WOSN. I'm Doug Jenkins alongside you today to bring you all of the action of this Girls Division III Regional Final Matchup. It's Ottawa Glendorf at 18-1-2 taking on the Woodmore Wildcats at 15-3-1. Should be a good one today. The big factor outside of what's going to get done on the field is the weather. Well, both teams played the regional semifinal games in relatively calm fashion uh, weather-wise earlier in the week. It is quite a bit windy here in Northwest Ohio today, and there is a strong wind blowing towards the uh, right side of the field from our vantage point here in the press box. It'll be interesting to see how that plays. But two battle-tested teams coming into today's contest. Of course, Ottawa Glendorf led on the season by a whole bevy of players making big contributions. You look at Bree Douglas and what she's been able to do, both scoring-wise with 21 goals and 12 assists on the season. Uh, but then you've got 13 goals apiece for uh, Micah Aldrich and Mackenzie Recker, 12 goals for Clara Beach. The big question mark is filling that spot of McKenna Seifker. Not easy to do, even though this is an Ottawa Glendorf team that is loaded with talent. It's tough to take 21 goals off the field and really be able to match that effort. Of course, Seifker also had seven goals. She is now out with a knee injury and will not be available for the remainder of the tournament. Beyond that, though, Ottawa Glandorf has done just a good job of shutting people down. You have to go all the way back to the game against Bluffton in September since they last allowed a goal. That was a game they won 2-1 to one against the Pirates uh, over in Bluffton since then. They have shut out every single opponent they have played. That does include a 0-0 tie with a very strong Archbold opponent. Then a win streak that started uh, with Van Wert and has not ceased since. They won that game 14 to nothing. You look at the tournament trail in uh, the sectionals, they were able to beat St. John's 10 nothing in the districts, 4 nothing winners over Continental District Final. They beat Miller City 6 nothing and then beat an upstart Riverdale squad 3 nothing on November 1st in that regional semifinal. So Ottawa Glendorf finds themselves in prime position to head on to the state level of the tournament. They've got some work to do against a Woodmore team who they bring in some uh, tough players as well. The one to keep an eye out for is your Travis, a junior forward. She has 24 goals on the season, distributes the ball very well as well. She has 10 assists this year as well. You also have contributors at Macy Balder, 12 goals, 13 assists, a senior forward. And also uh, Melanie Hunt, a senior forward with 13 goals now. She is not listed in the starting lineup for Ar or, excuse me, for Woodmore today. I'm going to accidentally call him Archibald. I'll just go ahead and tell you that if the blue and gold is going to throw me, and I mentioned Archibald earlier. Woodmore, the Wildcats, uh, again, coming in a record of 15-3-1. Looking at their tournament trail, they haven't exactly been as challenged either. That first game in the sectional finals against Eastwood, always a strong Eastwood squad. They won 2-1. They uh, shut out Ottawa Hills 4-0 and then beat Norway out of Creston 1-0 in the regional semi back on November 1st, and that brings them to our spot. The last time that they were defeated, you have to go back to October 6th when they lost to Archibald. So if you look at common opponents, both teams have had a test against a pretty good Blue Streak squad there. And that is how we set up for today's game. 40 minutes in the first half, 40 minutes in the second half, Celebrate, separating us from determining who will head off to the state as the captains head to the field here and we get ready to go. We'll take a break when we come back. First half action right here on WOSM. here on WOSN. Doug Jenkins with you for today's regional final matchup between the Ottawa Glendorf Titans and the Woodmore Wildcats. Again, the Titans coming in at 18-1-2. Woodmore coached by Jeff Helmke at 15-3-1. The Titans coached by Michelle Mack. Starters for Ottawa Glendorf, number five, Carly Brinkman in defense, number six, Carson Herford, a freshman midfielder, number 10, Maggie Verhoff at defense. She's a senior, number 11, Bree Douglas, the leading goal scorer, scorer, I should say, a <laughs> sophomore junior playing forward, number 11, or number 12, rather, Clara Beach playing forward. Number 14, Mackenzie Record. Number 16, Savannah Record. Number 
number 18, Lily Hasselman, number 19, Micah Aldrich, and number 20, Megan Horseman. The keeper will be Emma Brink, but she has 49 saves on the season. For the Woodmore Wildcats, they'll start number three, Paige Helmke, number four, Megan Vogelpohl, number five, Azure Travis, number 10, Izzy Cook, number 12, Razia Rios, number 17, Sage Perry, number 21, Katie Buchanan, number 22, Callie Hines, number 23, Macy Bowder, number 25, Elena Hahn, and number 29, Layla McGinnis will play net for Woodmore. Ottawa Glendorf in their white kits. Woodmore in the navy blues with the gold socks. And it will be Woodmore heading into a very stiff breeze here in this first half of action. We'll see how that impacts how they want to play. So a lot of times it's hard to get your attack going, but if you can find a way to get across or maybe a shot that in most circumstances would find its way over the net, sometimes that stiff wind, if you're up in your attacking third, can really make some magic happen. But conversely, it's a lot harder to get it into your attacking third when you're going into uh, some wind gusts like this here because we see battle for possession over on the far side of the field as we're just underway here in this first minute of action. Woodmore trying to use the far sideline. And the Titans will send that away as Sage Perry brings it down. She'll bring it across the field as she gets it to Hahn. Hahn double teamed. Uh, the Titans able to get that one away. That one up into the wind, and now OG able to bring it down. Clara Beach makes the turn, swings it out right side. That one intercepted, though. Nice use of the line to get the pass to Rios. Rios drops it back. Will they go right back to her? Yes, they will. That one a little bit long. Taken away by Ottawa Glendorf. Mackenzie Recker comes up with it, but knocks it out of play. Throw in is headed down. Titans do a nice job of initially getting that one away. And unable to keep that in play, though. So Woodmore trying to work it a little bit further down the sideline. Mackenzie Recker heads that one out of bounds for Ottawa Glendorf. And the Wildcats will have another throw on the near sideline. Now from, come from Kali Hines. Finds a short throw. The Titans tip it right back at her. Centering pass finds its way to Hahn. Hahn unable to send it in. The Titans get the steal and bump it out to Erford. Carson Erford looking down the field. Had draws a double team, stepped on top of the ball, and now it gets out of bounds. It'll be a throw in coming up on with Landor. Don't believe they called a penalty there. Well, actually, they did. They will call the trip. And Car Carly Brinkman will be able to send it down the field for Ottawa Glandor. Titans get into their attacking half of the field for the first time, but just battling for possession right now. Again, the first five to 10 minutes of just about every high school soccer game you see, it's such a feeling out process. That, what are the styles gonna look like? How are they gonna match up against each other? You gotta get those butterflies calmed down, especially at this level of the regional final. Uh, and a lot of times that first team that kind of settles in, finds what they wanna do, they're the team that'll have the advantage now as the Titans have another throw. Mackenzie Recker tries to throw it in toward the box, but it's immediately sent back out to Recker. That one got out of bounds, and it will be a Woodmore throw. Throw in coming up. Wildcats. That one, a high arcing one that's going to be headed by Travis back to midfield. Good hustle to get to the ball by Hahn. Hahn sends it down the field. And the Titans able to knock that one away, slow down the Woodmore attack, and a wildcat throw coming up from the near sideline once again. Just three minutes into the contest, throw in. Callie Hines, Titans take it away. Micah Aldrich, big physical presence for the Titans out there. Give 13 goals on the season. Always a difference maker, sends it down the field. That one's sent out of play. And the officials initially had signaled Ottawa Glendorf, but changed and they will say it will be Woodmore ball. Taking the throw, Hines once again. Short throw, Titans run through, but a little miscommunication there. I think it looked like Carson Erford thought that our teammate to our left was going to attack it, and uh, they both let it get away momentarily, but the Titans immediately back on the attack. Through ball is going to be sent back away by the Wildcat defenders. That'll 
good out of bounds. Quick throw by the Titans. That's a heads up play by Savannah Wrecker. Trying to push the pace a little bit as they play it up to Erford. Erford had it knocked away and it went back off of her foot though. Throw in Woodmore. Throw in is headed by Wrecker. Aggressive attack by Erford to come back to it. Erford comes back and she's just going to send that one down the sideline. It's going to go out of bounds, but it's going to be. I thought that ball went back further. It did. The officials are going to tell the Wildcats they need to buy it back up. Hines, not a bad attempt. Hey, I, you gave me the ball here. I'm going to try and throw it in here. But that was back further towards the quarter flag. The officials recognize that as OG tries to pin the Wildcats a little bit further back in their defensive third of the field. You see them gradually working the ball up, looking for a centering pass there. Just couldn't get a boot on it. Now they do. As Aldrich pumps it once to the right, a little bit of a long touch, and that'll allow Woodmore to get the ball out of harm's way. Out to Travis, the leading scorer for the Wildcats. A little stutter step, nicely defended though by Savannah Recker, and then sent out of play by Ottawa Glendorf. Back to Travis. Travis trying to split two defenders again. Mike Aldrich finds the loose ball, sends it down the field. It's chested down. Can the Titans get possession? No, they can't, but they do deflect it off of a Woodmore player, so it'll be a throw in coming up Ottawa Glendorf once again. Titans work it down the right side. Most of the game has been played on this near side of the field. There's a uh, pass that will switch fields a little bit. Now, can anybody get to it is the question. And, no, they could not. But it, Looks like it may have last went off of a Woodmore player. At least that's what the Titans are trying to effort. Doesn't look like that's going to be the case. So throw in coming up Wildcats. Battle for possession on the far sideline. Attempted to get it down the field. The Titans knocked it away initially. There's a lob forward intended for Clara Beach. She's not going to be able to catch up to that. And that will roll past the end line. We'll have a goal kick coming up for the Wildcats. Well, this is where this game will get interesting because the win will play a factor on the team having to kick towards that kick south goal here. Substitution Woodmore as Kelsey Kaler comes into the lineup. She's going to replace uh, Razia Rios. That was the kick. That one high. You can see right there at about the 20 yard line here at Frost Cowdow Stadium. That's where it dies. Unfortunately, the Titans only want to take advantage, bring one that and settle that one down as they knock out uh, another throw in as well. Throw down the sideline. Now, even with that stiff wind here, and I don't mean to play amateur meteorologist. Frost Cow Now Stadium is kind of built down in a bit of a bowl or valley. And so it seems like the lower line drive type of passes, those types of things, not quite as effective. I mean, you can see the wind on the field on your screen. But once that thing gets up above the football goal post, everything, it is absolutely going to hang up here. And Woodmore just kind of gradually working it down that right sideline. Titans kept knocking it out of bounds. That one finally sent out of bounds by the Wildcats. Neither team has really been able to play a uh, possession-oriented game just yet. That one cleared out of bounds as well, and another throw-in coming up for Ottawa Glendorf. Quick throw. Titans have gone quick with the throw-ins on their side of the field, but they've just not been able to get that possession on the outside as they get further into their attacking third. They knocked that one out of bounds, too. But again. Putting Woodmore or putting whichever team is defending this north goal in a situation where they have to make a goal kick. See how they went short there. Kept it low, kept it out of the wind, and now they're able to send it down the field. Just missed the player on the far right. And a throw in coming up Ottawa Glandorf. But if you even if you play that long pass and it doesn't end up to anybody for Ottawa Glandorf here in the first half, you're gonna find an advantage just because it's gonna be a short goal kick coming out regardless. So you should still be on the attack. I think that's gonna result in a corner. Yes, it will. Ottawa Glendorf will get the first corner kick of the game. This will come with 31.06 remaining and counting. Boy, is that gust of wind. You have to put this ball out a little bit further in front of the net than you typically would. And you can 
can see the Titan player having to duck falling corner flags. Bree Douglas set to take this kick. And that one, and that's the issue with the wind there is that it's going to be a tough one to keep in bounds on a calm day. That one absolutely got blown back behind the goal. And the crisis averted for the Woodmore Wildcats. Look at that. The ball won't even stay on its spot just to do a goal kick right now. There it goes again. We'll just let him kick it that way. Not much that can be done. It's not like you can have somebody put their finger on top of the ball or anything. So the ref say play on. Tight settle it over on the left sideline. There's a centering pass. It was in towards Clara Beach. Now sent back out to the far side of the box. Titans can turn one. This one out floats in front. There's a header, and it is knocked away. Corner kick coming up. Ottawa Glendorf looks like that came off the foot of Mackenzie Recker, who had it dead on, but a defender right in her way from the Woodmore Wildcats and the Titans will get their second corner kick of the game. And again, that ball's not going to stay put, so you almost have to go quick here. Carson Erford's going to take it. Erford puts it up, and again, that gets blown back behind the net. Boy, as strong as that wind is coming in, you almost need to put that up towards the top of the goal box, if not the little half circle at the top of the goal box, and let it blow back in. The challenge on that, though, is you don't trade for something like that, especially if you're forward when you're working on your set pieces or anything like that. So it's a lot harder to play a ball that's blowing the direction you also want to go. So quarter kicks down at this end of the field are going to be a mighty challenge today, we'll say that. We play just over 10 minutes here on the structure scoreboard. And again, it is 0-0. Working it up towards midfield. Titans tried to send it back down on the right sideline. Mackenzie Recker got a foot on it. It'll go out of bounds in substitution. And here's Melanie Hunt. So she is playing senior forward for the Woodmore Wildcats, one of their leading goal scorers, just 13 on the season. That is a luxury a lot of teams don't have to be able to bring 13 T goals off of the bench. We'll see what difference she is able to make in this one. It hasn't been a masterpiece of possession, but the elements have been a factor in that record. Sends it over to the far side, but chased down by Woodbourne. They'll get it over to the right side, centering pass, a nice diagonal, but nobody home. Closest player would have been Katie Buchanan the junior for Woodmore, but she was up there to get it. Now this ball's going to roll long down the field. And the Wildcats just going to send that one out of bounds. We'll see if the Titans try and go quick again here. Yes, they will. Set it down right on the touch line, and that is out of bounds. Goal kick coming up Woodmore. Again, this is a challenge. Ball doesn't want to sit still when you sit it down for the goal kick. Can't really play it up in the air. That's about as far as you're going to send it out. You have to hit a low line drive, kind of keep it below the bowl that uh, Frost Cow now sits in here. Throw it coming up, Woodmore. It's a nice aggressive play by the Titan defense to get the steal. Now they lay it out to the left. Douglas looking to do something with it, drop it back to Aldrich. It's knocked away from her initially, sent in by Horseman. That one at the top of the goal box. There's a shot. That one is wide and to the right. Getting a foot on it, Mackenzie Recker. Just get a solid strike on it. Looked like it maybe skipped off the top of her foot just a little bit, as you saw it had some uh, hard rotation to the right. Again, once that gets up in the air, it's going to go fast towards the north side of the field. It's a good goal kick into the wind, but it Caribs out of bounds, throw in Ottawa Glandorf, but they cannot control the throw in, so Woodmore is going to get it right back. I think both teams just trying to still settle down right now. Battle for possession is Erford, tries to cut through. A lot of blue kits right there, though, to go through. Now Woodmore is going to go quick down this line. Looking for Travis again, as you're Travis, the junior forward. One of the top players for this Wildcat squad. They're trying to find number five. They just have been unable to do so as Wrecker brings it down. Wrecker now swings it over to the left side. Good idea switching field. That ball just couldn't find the mark. 
The clearance is taken down by Horseman. Horseman plays it forward. Drop it back to Savannah Wrecker. Looks downfield. Wrecker trying to work the sideline and knocking that one out of bounds. Nicely played by the Wildcats as uh, Callie Hines saw that. She was able to get there. So Claire Beach actually, I think under normal circumstances, might be able to chase that ball down as she just kind of got her foot through the legs of her opponent, tipped it forward. But on turf, the ball's going to roll fast, and on a day like today, it's going to roll even faster. She was unable to get there, but it does put Woodmore in a situation where they have to do a goal kick once again. And again, they're going to keep it low, play it to the outside, and that one off the foot of Hines. So throw in Ottawa Glendorf. They try and get it to Beach. Sit back, Wrecker. Mackenzie Wrecker. Couldn't get around the defender. We've got a battle for possession. Ooh, Brecker just ate that one. She's going to be okay, it looks like. In the meantime, Carson Erford was unable to keep that in bounds on the right side. That deflection right into the face of, or, or excuse me, of, uh, of Mackenzie Recker. Looks like she's okay. Herringhouse going to come in for Ottawa Glandorf. And she will give Carson Erford a break. So it looks like uh, Razia Rios has re-entered the lineup now for Woodmore. Rios, a good distributor, 10 assists on the season. Nice job stepping in front by Savannah Racker. Racker plays Ward, now they get it back to Aldrich. Aldrich's left foots it into the goal box. And we'll credit the save for the keeper and Layla McGinnis as she fields it off the hop. Again, some saves easier than others, that one was an easy play for her. She looks down the field, but again, if she's not in the right spot, that one finds the back of the net. So it counts as a shot on goal, counts as a save for the junior goalkeeper. 23 minutes and 47 seconds remaining on the structure scoreboard. 0-0, zero, zero, your score, nil-nil, if you will. There's a play up to Travis. They'll play it to Rios. Rios off the back of her foot and then giving quick chase with Savannah Recker was trying to find a way through this Woodmore defense. Bree Douglas has been quite the spark plug. That's a nice pass down the line, and it's just too far. Split two defenders at different areas of the field, but it's just a little bit much weight on that one. It'll go out of bounds. That one could have been a dangerous tight attack. Look at the wind. Blow that one backwards. Aldrich has it. Aldrich fires, and that one took a Pop right in front of the keeper. Layla McGinnis does well to smother it. She'll get her second save of the game. Second shot on goal for Ottawa Glandorf. The Titans are finding some ways to test the keeper now. That one rolls back and easily picked up by McGinnis. That one is short. That's always dangerous when the keeper Short foots it. They're still high on the goal box. If the defense can get a good touch, again, tough in today's conditions, but that's one you can possibly chip over the top of the keeper. Won't be the case here, though, as Woodmore trying to get something done. Titans put a low one through the middle of the field. Beach comes up with a Beach to cut back, but that's a nice steal by the Woodmore Wildcats, bringing it back this way, trying to work it over to Rios. And that one. Gets out of bounds just behind the intended mark for Rios. So throw in Ottawa Glendorf. We're going to run a substitution. It looks like Bree Douglas is going to get a break here. Number six, Carson. Carson Erford re enters the lineup for Ottawa Glendorf. Ball deflected back to Rios. And now sent back to midfield. Erford waits on it. Left foot to the left side. Oh, that's taken away. A couple of good steals here as of late for the Woodmore Wildcats. Trying to bring it back to the middle, and that's just good defense. Erfer did a great job of not biting on any of the fakes from Katie Buchanan. And Buchanan ended up stepping on top of the ball. The Titans able to negate any sort of Woodmore pressure in that situation. Throwing down the sideline. Woodmore starting to get a little bit of possession here. Set forward, the Titans able to momentarily send it away. Titans doing a good job closing down 
Anytime uh, a Woodmore player has it, you can see the players setting up, looking across the field, seeing what they might want. Now Otto Glader might have something. They go right back to it. No, they don't. The pass errant off the foot of Clara Beach. And it'll be headed out of bounds by Woodmore. Throw in Ottawa Glendorf. But what the Titan defense does well, I think you're seeing it from the Woodmore defense as well, is they close down on the player with the ball very quickly. And that doesn't allow them the time to see, like, hey, do I want to cross it? Do I want to chip it? Do I want to keep it? Uh, they're making them have to go with their first instinct. So the defenses for both squads playing pretty good thus far. We've played about half of our first half here on the structure scoreboard here on WOSF. Pass over to the right. Titans work it to the foot of Mackenzie Recker, and that one deflected out of bounds. Last off of a navy blue kit, throw in Ottawa Glendorf. Substitution. Always feels like there's two navy blue jerseys around the ball on defense, and Titans having a tough time splitting them right now as Woodmore able to get clearance, but a throw in. Ottawa Glendorf. To throw in the center. That one's going to run long for a little bit. Aldrich came up with it, tried to play it over. I believe that's Douglas who just came back in. Yes, it is. And Douglas unable to get to that one. Woodmore works it over to the sideline. The pass just not on the mark that they want. Easily defended by the Titan defense. It's going to be a trip. I believe they're going to make that call. It's Either a trip or a throw at Ottawa Glendorf. Either way, Titans will have it. Don't see the, yeah, not a whole lot of protest from the Titan bench, so it's definitely going to be a free kick coming up. OG. Again, the wind at their back, so they can press forward a little bit as far as that defense will allow them. Looks like Woodmore will set their line about 10 yards out of the net. That one's going to float. Set down. Bounces to the right. We're going to drop it back, and that one is set high and long off the foot of Savannah Wrecker. And again, Ottawa Glendorf threatening, but unable to find the back of the net. That is Kelsey Kaler, the freshman, coming back in for Woodmore. And she will replace Melanie Hunt. That one's going to go out of bounds. Throw in coming up Ottawa Glendorf. Kenzie record a throw, but we've got a couple of tight subs before that will happen. Out of town or can't get WOSN? WOSN is now streaming 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app to subscribe. A $100 donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. And I am fired up about that as someone who lives in Finley and has a streaming service. I have been without WOSN for several years, and I'm so happy that I can get things like the sports report and local sports back on my TV. Really looking forward to having that at home. There's the throw in, and the Titans just unable to get possession. Throw in will come up with more. Aldrich has a little time to work with it. She's going to send it back to the defense. Chip it forward. It's going to be a long roll. Another chip forward. Again, these are always going to go a little bit longer. That one deflected to Calera Beach. I don't think Beach expected to, to come to her quite as fast as it did. She got a foot on it. It rolls it at the keeper. Again, not all saves are as hard as, as or as easy as others. It was easy for me to say. Let's try that. Some saves are easier than others. And uh, Layla McKinnis will get credit for a third save off of that one. Titans. Have played, I would say, about 60% of this game so far in the their attacking half of the field. They haven't really found the look yet that they're wanting. Three shots on goal, but not quite there. That one chipped forward. That one's going to go wide and a goal kick coming up for Woodmore. Again, our scoreboard presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. More waiting, now they'll take the kick. Headed forward by the Titans. 
little miscommunication by two or more players that were there. Titans will get possession, but they're not able to punch him forward. You see one, two, three, four, five, six blue jerseys kind of flying in the way. And if you don't play it through crisp, and it's going to be tough to play it through crisp right now with the, the wooden pushing that ball beyond where you expect it to go. So even having the, the wind well in advantage because you're going to play in your attacking third form, if you need to play with precision, it, it can cause some issues. And I think the Titans are running into that just a little bit right now. One more trying to turn the corner here, but coming back and working your way back into the play was Clara Beach. Throw in Titans. Woodmore fans disagree, but it will be more throw. Mike Aldridge sends that one forward. She got tripped up as she did so. So even though the ball ends up all the way back in the keeper, Layla McGinnis, the Titans are going to get a free kick from about the 40-yard line here at Frost Cow Now Stadium. You can check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more all at WOSN.TV. Low line drive, and that one is sent away. Carly Brinkman tried to set it in, but just throwing her body into it was the defender for Woodmore. And now the Wildcats going to switch field as they work it over, and they get it over to Rios. Rios, though, maybe a bit of a missed touch first, and able to catch up to her Savannah Wrecker. That'll be sent out of play. Throw in Ottawa Glandor. Over a couple of players, Mike Aldrich. That might have been a handball, but no signal from the officials. We'll play on, play it forward. Now back to Aldrich. Aldrich being challenged. Good challenge there by Macy Bowder, the senior forward. Didn't allow Aldrich to really turn and square to see the field. And as a result, we're still seeing that battle for possession here in the midfield portion. As Woodmore will throw it in again. Brinkman, the, lone, uh, the lonely goalkeeper for Ottawa Glandorf today. Said it uh, out there in the Ottawa boys game the other night. Team loves having a lonely goalkeeper. Brinkman, 49 saves on the season. Which is all she's had to really do tonight so far, or today so far, is direct her uh, defense to where they want her to be. In the meantime, that ball, that ball might not stop rolling till Sandusky. Goal kick coming up for Woodmore. Ball rolls back. There's the kick. That's a low one. Aldridge put it down. Aldridge challenged for it. Was unable to send it in on net. And now sent out of play. That went off of Lily Hasselman. Throw in coming up Woodmore. Wildcat throw headed back in the tight direction. A chip towards the top of the goal box. Headed away. Now headed right back. Aldrich sets it down. Aldrich again immediately. Now she's going to go to her left. Tried to get her left foot on it. And last touch. That should be a corner kick. Yes, it will be. That'll be the third OG corner kick coming up. Now the Titans have not had great success with the corner kicks. The two that they've had previous went behind the net. And again, it's that situation where you have to kick it out further than you want to or that you're used to. This time they're going to loft it up. There's the header, and it will go wide and well wide to the right. Goal kick coming up, Woodmore. Again, it's just going to be, it's harder than it, than it looks. You, you put it out there, but the ball starts taking the turn that you're not used to having to play as a forward. You're used to running it at almost a 90-degree angle, if not a coming back at you to a degree. That one, Aldridge tried to send in and sent out a play, and another tight corner kick. So Ottawa Glendorf threatening here with 11.46 remaining in the first half. Got a one more player down. And as they check out the Woodmore player, we'll step aside back with more after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Frost Canal Stadium. Our scoreboard presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Altslip Structure Outdoor Ohio. Bring your indoors out. The injured player for Woodmore is Paige Helmke. She's helped to the sideline. She looks to be quite shaken up. 
keep an eye to see if she's able to come back in, a senior midfielder. She looks to be in, in some pain. In the meantime, the Titans are going to get their fourth corner kick. Now they get their set play of motion. This one's going to be set low. Titans get to it first, drop it back. There is a drop into the box, and we're coming out to get it. Layla McGinnis makes the brave play as the keeper to come out off of her mark, grabs the ball, and negates the tight attack. I like the way Ottawa Glandorf played that one, though. Keep the ball low, keep it a little bit shorter. And they were able to get uh, a decent attack put together there. Now they battle for it back in midfield as we approach 11 minutes remaining in a half number one. Still no score on the structure scoreboard. Ball takes one hop. Horseman set him forward. That one's going to get out of play. A little picking up. The clouds are gathering now, too, here at Tiffin. And right there, Whitmore, a couple of times they've had the attack. And it's that second pass where they try and work that triangle. Like one, two, right back to the person who initiated the play. And the touch to get that pass back to the initiator just hasn't been as crisp as I think they would like. And that's allowed the Titan defense to swarm and then get it back in their attacking third. Of course, with now just over 10 minutes remaining, you know Ottawa Glendorf would love to put one in the back of the net here on this half where they're going to have the one in the back where it's going to be easier to be in their attacking half of the field and not have to work as hard in the second half to try and get those attacking opportunities because it's going to be difficult to work towards the south goal in half number two. Battle for possession down in the far corner. Stepping out is Mackenzie Wrecker. Wrecker sends back. Titans have a chance to cross. That one is sent up and out of bounds. No or yes. Yes, it will. Fifth quarter of this half coming up now for Ottawa Glendorf. We'll see if the Titans can do something on their fifth opportunity. Good effort by Layla McGinnis to try and keep it in bounds. Try to avoid it, but she just couldn't tight rope the end, the tight rope the end line. Here comes the corner kick. Titans they stack up the back of the box. Of course, the ball in the area where it's going to be kicked from rolled just a little bit. The Titans are going to try it again. That one is sent level within it. There's the header, and it is deflected away by the defense of Woodmore. That's a couple of times that a Woodmore defender has been in the right place at the right time. The Titans are going to get another corner here. Two times today that Woodmore has had defenders right along the post that have made a great play to send the ball away. Otherwise, Ottawa Glendorf might have a couple on the board here. Titans now, again, working from the back of the box. This one. Low in front, there's a header, and that one finds the back of the net. Ottawa Glendorf takes the lead with 8.32 remaining here in the first half of action. We'll be back with more after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Frost Cownow Stadium in Tiffin. Our scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio break your indoors out. Ottawa Glandorf leads by a Carson Erfer goal with 8.32 remaining in the first half, assisted by Bree Douglas. The Titans have been testing and testing and testing. And they're finally able to get on the board. They lead 1-0 here as we approach halftime. Just talking about it, the Titans really wanted to get the scoring started. There's a cross into the box. Mike Aldridge was close, but not close enough to challenge. He sent out a play. Titans immediately get the throw. That one nearly went right back to Mike Aldridge. Ball headed to the outside. Took a little bit of a weird hop, and now we'll go out of play. Throw in out of the play. Right, you get the feeling that the Titans keeping the foot to the accelerator here right now with just over seven and a half. One nothing is great going into the half. Two nothing would be much better if you could build that lead, knowing that you're going into the wood in the second half. Defensive header sends it up, so that allows Layla McGinnis to come out and play with her hands. Try and decompress the field here a little bit. The question is how far will the punt go? That one gonna be down at about the 40 yard line. 
Titans play it back as they get it to Wrecker. Wrecker wanted to play the sideline, but it goes out of play. Throw in goes to Melanie Hunt, who has checked back into the game. Titan defense has a little time to work with it. Megan Horseman sends it left side. And the Titans trying to work that far sideline once again. It's a nice lob down the left. Can they catch up to it? That's going to roll forever, and it will roll out of bounds. Good pursuit on the left sideline, but it just isn't going to find a Titan player. Uh, here's the interesting thing. In the second half for Ottawa Glandorf, that plan of attack may work better because even the, on the turf field where the ball rolls a little bit faster, that wind's going to blow back. And I think you can see the Titans really make some hay that way if they're able to play that sideline. We haven't seen Woodmore be able to quite do it, but I don't know that that's necessarily their plan of attack. You see them try and work the outside in back to the out uh, anytime that they've been able to get into their attacking third. It's been a while since uh, Woodmore has been on the attack. They've been playing the majority defense here in the first half. Again, not to be unexpected. That ball will go out of bounds off of a Woodmore boot. Down the line. Douglas trying to turn it to the middle, but unable to hang on to that one. It goes out of bounds. Woodmore throw it, headed right back to the throwee. And she knocked it out of bounds. So Ottawa Glendorf puts it in quickly. That was thrown hard at Rick, or excuse me, at Aldrich. He's unable to hang on to it. Woodmore will come up with it. They're just trying to find. They don't really have. If you look at the shape of the Woodmore defense, or excuse me, the Woodmore attack right now. They got this steal, but there's nobody there to go to that outlet pass, that secondary pass to keep the attack going. And Ottawa Glendorf immediately had two white jerseys there. Maybe a little bit out of shape, not from a conditioning standpoint, from a formation standpoint for Woodmore. They're unable to keep attacks going as a result there, or at least in that instance. Throw in, put it out of bounds by Woodmore. Throw in coming up, Ottawa Glendorf. Battle for possession on the far side. Four and a half remains in the first half. Again, Ottawa Glendorf leading 1-0 by virtue of a Carson Erfer goal. It's a nice move to the middle of the field. Pass over to the left side as they get it to Izzy Cook. Excuse me, Melody Hunt. And Hunt had it knocked away from her. Hunt last touch as it goes out of play. Well, Aldrich chips it forward. The defender then hit it. Backwards, because I don't think she was expecting to get Aldrich is going to get tripped. And uh, the whistle is going to give the Titans a free kick here with just under four minutes remaining. And this is in a precarious spot for the Woodmore faithfuls. It looks like about the 15 yard line. Titans have been getting better and better in these situations as this game has rolled up. Set pieces have led to a lot of threatening situations for Ottawa Glendorf, and have led to their goal. Bree Douglas, the leading assist player, and she sends that one in. I think she was maybe looking for a little bit more bend to the back left as that one goes into the hands of Layla McGinnis. McGinnis will get her fourth save of the game. That one sent back towards the middle of the field. <laughs> Titans do better work it out to the near sideline as they want to get it to Clara Beach. Beach straight to center. It's deflected out of bounds. Quick throw Titans trying to get it right back to Beach. And Woodmore really can do nothing other than knock it out of play. Quick throw, OG. Back to Beach. Beach trying to loft one into the box. And it's knocked out of bounds. Beach the throw. Throws it into the keeper box. Deflected away initially and sent back out by Woodmore. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. Short patch to Beach. Beach lobs it in with the left foot. But again, Woodmore able to initially to get clearance. And the Titans trying to corral it on the near sideline. Tip it out of bounds. Throw in coming up. Woodmore. 
Wildcat substitution will bring in Raja Rios. Rios, a tough player for the Wildcats, able to play from the back of the field, but really command things when Woodmore gets uh, in on the attack. That's why she's one of their, uh, why she leads the team in assists, or one of their assist leaders this season. Is, you, know, you can set up at about that 30, 40 yard line, drop back, make it to see the field, make a nice diagonal pass to a goal scorer. I think that's how she's really impacting the game. Now it gets up to Rios. Rios playing up, trying to split two or three defenders there. The Titans able to pry it away from her with a minute and a half left. That one sent through the left side. Aldrich chased it down, stopped it. Now trying to get back to her right. Defend him one on one. She lofted one in. That one just misses on the right side. As will go out of bounds, it will be a goal kick. Aldrich with some nice one on one work over there, just getting back to her right foot, trying to find the corner. And a nice cut on it. Just couldn't quite get the angle that she wanted. 60 seconds remain on the structure scoreboard with Ottawa Glandorf leading 1 0. There's the kick, and that's Douglas turns and faces. Sends it forward. That one's going to roll for a while, and it'll be a goal kick with 34 seconds left. Here, one more going down and going down one nothing going into the break here. Not optimal, but you know that the elements will be a little bit more in your favor in the second half. And so preventing that second goal, I think ends up being a big a big contributing factor for Woodmore. Something you're definitely focused on as you play defense the majority of this half. It looks like that is how the half will come to a close as the Wildcats are able to get it out towards midfield. They won't be able to get a scoring opportunity, but they will keep the Titans off the scoreboard one more time. And we have played 40 minutes at Frost Cowdown Stadium in Tippin. On Glendorf, the Titans lead by a score of 1-0 over the Woodmore Wildcats. We'll take a timeout back and forth on WOSM. Stadium here on WOSN. Doug Jenkins with you for this regional final matchup in girls high school soccer. Ottawa Glendorf leading the Woodmore Wildcats by a score of 1-0. Our arts, our scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. So you take a look at the first half of action. Ottawa Glendorf uh, gets the one goal. That came with 8.32 remaining in the half. Carson Erford, the goal scorer, Bree Douglas, was able to feed her that, but it came out of a set piece situation. The Titans had just had the corner kick. They didn't score directly off the corner kick, but they were still uh, angling from that. Um, in the meantime, the Titans have been able to put the ball on net. Five shots on goal. Layla McGinnis, the junior goalkeeper for Woodmore, has four saves as a result. Uh, a couple of those shots for the Titans just kind of shot or maybe chips into the box that went long with the wind in the back of Ottawa Glendorf that were easily fielded by McGinnis, but she's definitely had to put the work in a couple of other times as the Titans were coming, but they were able to get that one goal by Carson Erford. If you want to look at some of the keys for the game here in the second half for Ottawa Glendorf, now the situation switches a little bit. You're going into a very strong win to the north, but I think you have to continue to play aggressive if you're the Titans. That's your bread and butter. You're not going to change the way that you do things. You're not going to sit back and, and maybe just play try and play a lot of defense and get out here with a one nothing win. I get the feeling this Titan team wants to try and get uh, one or two more goals on the board. Now, how do they do that? Well, during the first half, you saw them try some nice passes down the sideline, and uh, especially the left sideline. There was a couple opportunities where they split a couple of defenders. You had a runner, but they're not able to catch up to it. You're on a turf field, which you're going to play faster on turf to begin with, and you've got the wind pushing the ball out of bounds. But in the second half, that factor with the wind pushing the ball back might work to your advantage. So if they're able to work that side pad, that pass down the sideline, I think you're going to see Ottawa Glendorf possibly get some attacks from the left and from the right, some crosses in that could be very dangerous. So we'll see if Ottawa Glendorf does that. Conversely, if you are Woodmore, what are your keys in the second half? Well, one, the elements are now in your favor. You have the wind at your back. And I know we keep talking about the wind. And look, it's just me talking. I have 
No, I don't have anybody to bounce ideas off of. I will <laughs> later today. But the wind is a huge factor. It's a very strong one. We're seeing gusts of up to around 40 miles per hour, according to the National Weather Service uh, in this contest. Here's what you need to do if you're a Woodmore. Some of those clearances that you get, try and just care of them at the tight defense because the ball is going to travel long. Maybe you catch someone out of position. Maybe you get a bad bounce off of a tight defender. If you're working downhill, suddenly you're on the attack. But also for Woodmore, you got to get your playmakers involved. We haven't seen a lot of Razio Rios yet uh, getting the ball to her foot. Azure Travis has not seen the ball off her foot a lot. And I don't really think it's a weakness in Woodmore. I think it's a strength in Ottawa Glendorf. They've just been able to be on the attack so much that the playmakers for Woodmore have not had their opportunities. Let's see if that changes in the second half. But here, after 40 minutes of play, Ottawa Glendorf leads the Woodmore Wildcats 1 0. And we are back with second half action after this. Welcome back to Frost Cowdown Stadium in Tiff and Doug Jenkins with you on WOSN as Ottawa Glendorf owns a 1-0 lead over the Woodmore Wildcats after one half of play. That goal came with 8.32 remaining in the half by Carson Erford, assisted by Bree Douglas. A very important goal. I know you're saying, well, of course, a goal is important, but important for that moment in the game because the Titans with the win at their back, you got to try and get one in before that half. You, when you have that type of an advantage, you have to at least get one. And the Titans were able to do so after about 32 minutes of action. So that was what allowed them to go up by one. Now we see how Woodmore tries to answer with the wind at their back here in the second half. Now the winner of this game is going to play the winner of Akron Manchester and Poland Seminary. And that game coming up on the 8th of November. But a lot of work to be done right now. And that game's going to be played at 1 o'clock this afternoon. So probably just about approaching halftime in that contest. A lot of work to be done here, though. It's 40 minutes up on the clock. And we are ready for half number two. Titans have it going into the wind as Aldridge sends it over to the right side. And there you go. There's an aggressive play by the Wildcats. It's getting to us. Rios. Wildcats immediately on the attack here. The Titans finally able to negate that. Aldridge plays it over to her right. Spinning with the ball there, Buchanan. Buchanan had it taken away by Aldrich. Aldrich, nice pass over to the left side. The Titans have a little room to work with it here. Get it into their attacking third pass to the left side, Bree Douglas. She is dangerous in this area, especially when she gets down towards the corner. That's where she tried to move, but a nice takeaway and clearance by the defense of Woodmore. That's Megan Vogelpohl. Player who went down early for uh, uh, was Paige Helmke and have not seen her return. I don't believe. Keep an eye on that for Woodmore. In the meantime, Titans on the attack. Clearance not going to go very far. Titans try and center it up. Not a white jersey initially there. Now a loose ball. Well, Glendorf doing a good job of just taking away anything, leaving uh, the goal box at the moment of that area. And that's a nice deflection. And that's going to be a Titan throw. That's a really good aggressive play by Megan Horseman. Woodmore fans are not happy about it, but I believe the officials got that one correct. There was a deflection right before that ball went out of play. As Horseman heads it forward. That would carry it a little bit further than I would have thought. Douglas challenging. Ball sent out of play. Throw in coming up Ottawa Glendor. Throw in will come from Lily Hasselman. Went by her intended target and sent to the near sideline. Kept alive and hustling back down the uh, field is Melanie Hunt. Hunt tried to send it down the sideline, looking for Wagner, or pardon me, for uh, Azir Travis. But it's sent out of play and a throw in coming up, Ottawa Glandorf. Already you've seen Woodmore get it on the foot of a couple of their premier players in Travis and Rios. And this is where Titans are going to have to be a little more buttoned up with their play. Make sure that you're getting good contact on the ball as they send it back down the field. The last thing you want to do when you're going into a stiff wind is go to clear and put it off the side of your foot because not only is it going to go straight up and spin, it's actually going to start going back towards your own goal with the uh, opposition coming right at you. 
Goal kick for Ottawa Glendorf. We'll see how they play this year. And again, this we're just underway in the second half. Goal kick. You see the further it rises and takes that angle back down, gets to about the 30-yard line. Rios comes up with it. Rios to her left. That next touch, though, just wasn't where she wanted the Titans. Send it out of play. Woodmore will get another look at it. Nicely read initially by the tight defense. Here comes a shot, and that one is going to be high and wide to the right. Goal kick coming up for Ottawa Glendorf. That's the first shot of any sort for Woodmore in this contest. Not a uh, shot on goal, but again, Woodmore going to get some opportunities here in this half. And now the Titans find out what it's like to try and get a goal kick. The ball just won't sit still. Douglas heads it up and then headed right back at her. Aldridge is backing up initially and then initially challenged. She did a good job to get back to that. I thought initially when she gave ground, Woodmore might be able to take it away from her, but she was able to send it forward. The Titans maybe trying to get something cooking here, but then take it away at midfield. Sent over to the left side by Elena Hahn. Throw in will come from Woodmore. It's a nice receipt uh, receive of the throw in, but the Titans able to get a little bit of a touch on it, disrupt things. Trying to work it out to the sideline. And eventually it was shielded away from Lily Hasselman, sent back down the field, and that one rolls through. It's going to roll long, and coming out to get it is Emma Brakeman. First time that Emma's really had to get to the ball in the box. But it goes back to the, the keys to the second half we're talking about for Woodmore is send it down the field. Let your speed try and catch up to it. They've got athletes out there. They've got speed. If, if OG is out of position or misplays one, you're in business. So I think that was, well, that one went long. It's the right idea for Woodmore here in half number two. Quick throw for Woodmore. Rios had it sent away from her, but last touch by the Titans. Here comes a throw in. Uh, will be a throw in. First a substitution as Kelsey Kaler comes into the lineup. Looks like Rios is going to get a quick break here, six minutes in to the second half. We're looking for the perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan. WSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world, online on Roku and Apple TV for $100 for an annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holidays. Sign up at app.wosn.tv or by downloading our Roku or Apple TV apps. That is welcome news to high school sports fans in Northwest Ohio. In the meantime, Woodmore on the attack. Drop the pass back to Buchanan. Buchanan, short pass, and the second pass taken away by the Titans. They don't have numbers. They'll send it through. That one's going to slow down, and the Titans will be able to keep it in play. Coming up with it is, excuse me, is uh, Beach. And that one knocked out of play, and it will be a corner kick coming up for Ottawa Glandorf. Seventh corner kick of the game for OG. Now they have the opposite problem at the end of the first half. Now you have to try and keep it a little bit tighter to the front of the net because the ball is going to blow out towards your attackers. But that's almost a better situation to be in because the attackers are coming in at a more natural position than having to catch up to the ball. That one got through. It sets down. There's a shot. It's loose in the box. And then putting a right hand down to set it down is Layla McInnes. It bounced off a couple of players. McInnes dives, pins it to the ground, and that will Slow down an Ottawa Glendorf opportunity. Aldrich boots that one over to the near sideline and out of play. Don't think Lily Hasselman was too happy about the way Melanie Hunt shielded her away from there. Maybe a bit aggressive in that shield. But she's trying to keep Hasselman away from it. Throw it coming up now for Woodmore. Looks like Bree Douglas is going to get a breather here. That's going to bring Maya Herringhouse. Sophomore forward into the lineup. We have a whistle as the throw is taking place. I don't think maybe the Ottawa Glendorf player was off the field quite yet. 
long throw. Titans not able to get clearance initially. Hunt centering pass. Wanted to get right back to him, but there are three white jerseys in the way. Said they'll try and switch fields. Sent away. Touched by Erford, I should say. Erford trying to split a couple of Wildcat players. It's a nice job following the play there by Wrecker to take what should have been easy, an easy pass away from uh, Woodboard. Now the Titans working it down the right sideline. Deflection. OG keeps it alive, centering pass. Titans are going to get the advantage here off of that trip. It got to uh, Beach. Beach wants to send it into the corner. This one's going to roll long. And Woodmore would have been wise to just let that roll out of bounds. Instead, the Titans stay on the attack here. Back to Aldrich, sets it down. Aldrich wants to a right, now goes and passes that direction where she gets it to a wrecker. Record lays out wide right. Here is the cross and coming up high to get it. Layla McGinnis, the keeper for Woodmore. And the Titans kind of gifted a second opportunity on that on the ball that would have likely rolled out of bounds and been a goal kick. But McGinnis is able to put it in the work and make sure that the Titans didn't score on that one. And Woodmore sends this one out of play. I think we've got a Titan substitution. I believe that's Bree Douglas going to come right back in after a couple of minutes of getting a breather there. Played about 10 minutes here in the second half. Ottawa Glandorf up 1 0 on the structure scoreboard. Titans again looking for a cross. Not going to get it. That one's sent long. OG keeping about three players back towards midfield. So very aware is Coach Michelle Mag of the impact of the wind in this half as well as what the strategy of Woodmore will be. Throw in Titans. And they're going to get another one here in rapid succession. Let's see if they get that sub in, and they will wave the sub onto the field. So Maya Herringhouse will come back out of the lineup. In for OG, number 15, Marissa Brown. And into the Wildcats, number eight, Lowry. And Marissa Brown, number 15, into the lineup for OG. She's going to get the ball immediately. This time, Woodmore able to send it back towards midfield, but out of play. Throw in coming up, Ottawa Glendorf. Today's game will also be broadcast on WSOSN. Sunday at 5 ball was sent towards the middle of the field by Lily Hassman. Sunday at 5 p.m. This game will be rebroadcast. Thank you. We got a penalty going against Ottawa Glendorf, so free kick coming up for the Wildcats of Woodmore. Lob it forward. That one takes a bounce. Bounces to the outside and nicely defended by the Titan defense there. As you can see, Woodmore trying to get to the edge, trying to work it out to the sideline. An initial steal battle with Landorf. That one was going to go out of bounds, throw away Titans. A couple players got tangled up, and it just got angled off of a, a navy blue jersey there. The Alyssa Number Smith six, into the lineup now Edward. for Woodmore. The Titans going to run in a couple substitutions. As Marissa Brown comes back out, see Bree Douglas. She quickly came back in. I think maybe just getting some instructions from Coach Michelle Mag over there on the far sideline. Titans got one other substitution back in as well. That's going to be another tight throw as it'll go off of Rios. Douglas initially was going to take the throw. Now she's going to let Megan Horseman come up to take that. Horseman going to go right back to Douglas, drops it back. Again, if you're going to drop it back like that, it can't be quite as slow as now you've got Woodmore on the attack. But that pass to the middle was off the mark. The Titans set it out of play, and they'll slow things up. See the Wildcats getting more opportunities already here, 13 minutes in to the second half. Hasn't been frequent enough, but it's certainly been more than that they were able to see there in the first half. Nice kick forward by Ottawa Glendorf just to kind of decompress the field a little bit. Douglas stepped in front of it, sent it out of bounds, throw in. Will come up now for Woodmore. Rios. 
throw floated. Initially brought down there by, I think that was Travis, looking to turn the corner, but was unable to get it. <coughs> Pardon me. Battle for possession. Wilmore gets it. Trying to turn the corner. There's the centering pass sent away initially by the Titan defense. Another centering pass. That one is poked. And coming out of the net to go get that will be Emma Brinkman. Just got through. Just was not really able to get a solid strike on the ball. Morsha just kind of tried to direct it at the net. Popped up off the top of her foot. No harm done there. Still no shots on goal for Woodmore. Throw in for the Wildcats on the far side of the field. Working in traffic. A little miscommunication as there were three Titans around it, but didn't really have an idea of who was going to go for it. It initially allowed Woodmore to get a touch on it. Didn't end up mattering as it was sent back out of bounds. Woodmore going to drop it back towards midfield. Maybe try and switch fields here. We'll go through the middle. Nicely read by the Titan defense. If they can get a good touch out of here, they might get something going. Working it down the left sideline and now set out of play as Mike Aldrich was giving chase. Rios had to send it out. Substitution, Ottawa Glendorf now. Looks like Aldrich will come out of the lineup as Michelle Mack keeping the legs fresh there for the Titans. Megan Horseman will take the throw now for OG. It's a nice throw down the line. And a throw in coming up for the Titans once again. Hasselman to throw. Excuse me, Hasselman is the... I got the text on that one. Hazelman throw, and that one is headed and out of play. She tried again. Douglas trying to turn. This is where she does her work. Crosses out in front, and it's there. It's headed, and it is wide to the left. Douglas does such a good job in that tight space down the corners and centering it up. Got up there, and I believe that was uh, Carson Erford who got her head on it. Just couldn't find the left side of the net. But the Titans love to see some more attacks like that as that one is sent out of play by Horseman. It's going to be a tight, yeah, it's going to be a handball. And they're going to make the throw. Could have gone either way. It was going to be Woodmore ball regardless. Ball sits out in front initially. Hahn with it. Drops it back and gives it to Travis. Travis works it to her right. Nice pass to the middle to Hunt. Hunt trying to split the defense with the Titans. Do well to clear that one across midfield. This one will likely roll out of play, and it does. I throw and chest it out of bounds. He's one getting up there to get it. Another throw in headed by the tight defense and set down here on the near side by Bowder. Tried to send it forward, but she just got that her foot a little bit too far underneath it, cut underneath the ball and ended up spinning back to the right. Another tight and throw in. Rios sets it down, and that one sent away. And that's a little bit about what we were talking about there. Mackenzie Recker went to set it, but it went off the top of her foot and spun backwards. That's why Woodmore has to be so aggressive here. Obviously, down one nothing, you're going to be aggressive. But using the elements and everything, sometimes you just send it in because a touch like that can lead to a dangerous attack for yourself. Not the case that time, but it illustrates the point. Woodmore will take the throw here. Rios, long throw. First touch, though. 
Hazelman's able to catch up to it. It's right back to her. Hazelman does a nice job. So they get to Douglas. Titans working a triangle there in tight quarters. Now they're going to switch field. Erford. Look at the That pass was probably going to be behind the mark, but the wind made it so it was absolutely behind the, the play. That ball's going to bounce across the field, and the Titans make the smart play there is to just send it out of bounds, let the troops get back. Now Melanie Hunt set to take the throw. She's going to think better of his you know, substitution if Rios will take the throw. Roger Rios again with the 10 assists on the season. Love nothing more to be an impact player right here. You see she plays out of the back of the field. So you know she's able to get that cross, find people in the middle of the field. She's got a real knack for that. But under the circumstances with the wind, it's a lot harder, plus a very aggressive Titan defense not really letting her see the field as well, I think, as she's used to. Back the we are near the midway point of the second half. Again, with Audible Glendorf up 1-0. Our scoreboard presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. That one lob long down the field. And nearly rode past by Brinkman. Did a nice job of coming back to that one. But again, that took a bounce and then a high hop and then was pushed further by the wind. It's just all the angles that you're used to are just negated by the way the elements are today. Titans send that one out of play, trying to get it to Douglas, but she's unable to get her foot on it. Headed forward, Douglas sets it down. Tried to back heel it, now turns to her right, sends it forward, and that one is gonna spin out of bounds. Here comes the throw from Rios. Headed right back at her. Headed forward and almost kept alive by Clara Beach. Rios the throw. Titans have done a good job being the first to get a touch on and on. All of these Woodmore throws. First or second touch anyway as Aldrich chests that one to her right. She's able to work back to it. Centering pass. Wasn't there, but stolen away almost. Woodmore able to corral it. Trying to turn the corner on the far side of the field. Working it down towards the corner flag. That's Travis, that's where she's dangerous. Titans have done a good job of pinning her in though and just staying in front of her. There's the cross. Ball loose in the box for a boom with and the Titans are gonna send that one out. Throw in coming up Woodmore. Ball drop back, centering pass. Titans get the first touch on him. The spin, he's gonna keep it at Woodmore's side. No, it rolled hard to the right. And I think they're gonna say that the Titans actually contributed to why that took such a hard left out there. Throw in, got all the way into the middle of the box. Really the most sustained pressure that we've seen from Woodmore in this contest. That one got through, couple of uh, missed touches. Titans are gonna need to send that away, and they do off the foot of Megan Horseman. Again, illustrating the point, just hammer one through. Make the defenders have to handle it. The Titans that time able to send it away. Again, the Titans not able to get a big clear. Aldrich is slow to get up. I think they're going to say that she actually got tripped. And as a result, the Titans are going to get a free kick here. Aldrich is limping a little bit. We'll keep an eye on that. 17.57 remaining. Comes all the way over to the near sideline. Rios had it deflected out of bounds. Hazelman got a foot on it. Throw it headed by Horseman. Centering pass this can be dangerous. Hahn has it. Hahn's initial attempt is deflected and out of bounds, but it's going to be a corner kick for Woodmore. Their first corner attempt of the game. Now we'll see how they handle this. 
Going over to the corner, Raza Rios. As Emma Brinkman gets her players set, Titans have a player at each post, trying to make sure that everybody's marked. They're going to drop it out first. We'll see if they go right back to her. They do. Rios moves it back to her right. The corner, or the, uh, the attempt to center it is deflected out of bounds. Titans did a good job of stepping in front of that, making sure that she's not able to put that one out in front of the net. Ball this time out of bounds by Woodmore. I knew this was probably going to be the case in the second half, but Woodmore was going to be able to have some more sustained pressure. And that has been the case. It's played about the last 10 minutes of this game on the uh, attacking half of the field for the Wildcats. That ball sent out of bounds. Last touch by Ottawa Glendorf. Centering pass, there's a little time to work for Woodmore. That almost ended up being a fortunate accident for Woodmore as they wanted to go to the left. The ball kind of stuck in place as they went back to the right. There was some space, but the Titans able to close that out pretty quickly. Headed forward. In there is Travis. Not who the Titans want to see with the ball inside the goal box, but they're able to send it away. Can they keep it in play now? Uh, that's a nice steal on the left side to keep Woodmore in an attacking position, and they will be able to do so. I think that's uh, a lot of Hain, or Han rather, over on that side of the field. And a nice stick. Otto Glendorf will get a throw in. Go down the sideline, and that one went out of bounds. Came in bounds, and then went right back out. Down to just 15 minutes left, or a little over 15 here. Regional final action. The winner moving on to state to take on the winner of Akron Manchester and Poland Seminary. Douglas, right foots it forward. Immediately sent right back in the defensive half for the Titans. And again, the Titans kind of learning what life was like for Woodmore there in the first half as every attempt to clear the ball just ends up shorter than you think it's going to be. That one's loose in the midfield. Nice touch to the left, but the second touch off the mark as Ottawa Glitter tried to get it back out to Hazelman. Rios throws it down the sideline. And the Titans deflected out of bounds. Oh, that will be an Ottawa Glandorf throw. It was the last touch off of a blue jersey. The Titans will work the substitution. Marissa Brown will come into the lineup. In the second substitution, we'll get to as play continues here. That throw had carried past the first wave of players. And Sent back out of bounds immediately. It's headed backwards. One more trying to keep it alive. Rios got ahead on it, but sent it out of play in doing so. Throwing Ottawa Glandorf. Trying to get it to Douglas. Ottawa Glandorf doing a good job working this left side line. They quickly get it to Douglas. Douglas challenged by Rios. Certainly a matchup that uh, you were looking forward to in this game. Quick throw into the goal box. Looking for a cross. And Clara Beach's attempt to send it into the middle of the goal box was deflected, now sent long down the field. This ball's going to roll a little bit. Titans need to get a foot on it. There's a missed touch. They able to get a second touch on it, though, and it went past as you Travis. Titans fortunate there. That first touch, if it had found Travis, could have been very dangerous. Aldrich put a left foot on it to try to send it over to the near sideline. That's going to go out of bounds. It will be tight ball, and the Titans going to rub us, uh, run a substitution in here. Bree Douglas will get a substitution. And into the lineup. It's going to be Carson Erford who comes in. Kelly Hines.
throw in tight. It's a long throw into the wind. Herford not there to receive it, but is there to put the pressure on. And sent out of bounds by Sage Perry, the junior defender. Quick throw, trying to get back to Herford. Moore sends it out to the left side. Melanie Hunt. Hunt trying to turn the corner, couldn't quite get there. Now Ottawa Glendorf applying some more pressure as they have it on the left side of the keeper box. There's the throw into the box. Trying to turn the corner. It's a nice pass, and that is deflected out of bounds. That was close as Callie Hines got a foot on it. That's one where you hold your breath for a second because you're afraid of a bad carom into the back of the net and an own goal. However, it will be a corner kick for the Titans. Just their second corner kick here in the second half. Conversely, they had six in the first half. 11-22 remaining. There's the kick. It's got to turn. It's loose. It's into the back of the net. And Ottawa Glendorf. Wait a second. I think they're going to be called for offsides. Looking at the far referee with the flag and where he is standing. Well, yeah, they are going to drop the ball back, so no goal. And the Titans, who almost went up 2-0. I think it was Marissa Brown who was in the vicinity to punch that one in. The Titans were unable. So they had one player pass the last defender. And you'll see that every once in a while in these situations where they just sneak ahead. Yeah, they're going to make her kick that again. Well, at least the sideline official wanted to make her kick it in. That's, yeah, that's going to be the case. I think coach, or uh, the goalkeeper, Layla McGinnis says, look, I didn't want it to roll forward six yards. Look how windy it is. But they're going to make her kick it again. They have stopped the clock with 10.24 to talk about it. So the Titans aren't getting the benefit of any additional time rolling off here while they do this. Of course, the goal in this game scored by Carson Erford. That happened with 8.32 remaining in the first half. Bree Douglas. Had the assist on that. Douglas almost had an assist here in the second half as well. There is the goal kick to get things back underway. Deflected and battled for right outside the center circle. Ball sent to the right side to Rios. Rios trying to pass it down the line, but deflected out of play by the Titans. Megan Horseman who heads it forward. Horseman's been able to send several back with her head here in this game. She's been a very steady defensive presence. The Woodmore fans want him to foul on the Titans. They're not going to get it. Woodmore on the attack now. There's a long pass, and that's going to roll too far. Again, just a little bit much on that ball. You don't have to put a whole lot on it as you're going downhill towards on the right from our vantage point for that Thank ball to roll long and off the three. field. And that's what happened there. We are inside 10 minutes with nine and a half left. Titans just trying to get the ball to stay put as they get ready for the goal kick. Not having much luck. Brinkman just got frustrated and just set it out of play. I think that might have been a frustration kick by Carly Brinkman. They didn't want to get called for a delay. That's a yellow card. You have to come out of the game and a free kick outside the box. So I don't know that any of these refs are going to be itchy with the yellow card in that situation today, given the circumstances. But it's something that's in the back of your head as a player. Brinkman able to send that one. I think where she would have liked to put the last one she took. But again, it's Woodmore who got the first touch. Deflected it back to Aldrich. Aldrich put some power on that one to get it across midfield, but the Titans aren't able to get to it first. Aldrich able to pry it away from Woodmore's attack. But the attempt to send it back down the field out of pounds. Throw in, Horseman heads it forward, and it's going to stay in play. Hunt right foots it back down the field. Horseman leaned into her the head. Travis trying to cut back to her left. Travis caught up in a couple of white jerseys. The ball still in dangerous territory. The Titans send it away. Long 
kick down the field. It's white or wide of the right side of the goal coming out to get Emma Brinkman. And it remains 1-0. The crowd on hand for both schools here today. Maybe a bit of a split squad with their fans for Ottawa Glendorfs. Of course, they've got runners in the state to meet today as well. That's a trip against Ottawa Glendorf, so it's going to be a free kick right about that 25-yard line. This is a dangerous situation for the Titans. You can take a direct route at this. If you're the person taking the kick, I think it's going to end up being Raja Rios. It will be. She's got good accuracy. We know that because she's able to uh, get so many assists on the season. Takes the kick, and that one goes wide to the right, just barely. Saw Emma Brinkman. Again, Brinkman kind of looking in the sun from her vantage point. Saw her take a little bit of a stutter step. Wasn't sure exactly where that was going to bounce. The last thing you want is for that to bounce and take a hard bounce back into the net. She did a good job staying on top of it, but it'll go wide. And Ottawa Glendorf again maintaining that 1 0 lead. Kick again as it rolls off its spot three times. The Titans just finally kick it away. They haven't been able to get much possession here in the last five, six minutes of this game. And as a result, Woodmore playing on the half of the field they would rather be on down one nothing. Titans able to get some clearance back to midfield. And they don't have anybody up there. That when Erford stepped in front of Erford. Going to send it long down the field as well. Trying to get over there is Clara Beach. It's sent out of play. Last touch by Beach, and it will be a throw in coming up for Woodmore. Here's the throw in. Bounced off a couple players. Last touch by a tight show. It'll be another throw in for Woodmore. Throw in bounces. Rolls for a little bit. All the way wide to the right as coming up to it is Rios. Can Rios keep it in play? No, she can't. The Titans will have a throw. Come on, come on, we're getting to that part where now if the Titans sub past that five minute mark, it will stop the clock. They don't opt to run any subs in there. So Michelle Mag think, has the crew on the field that she wants for this final five minute push. Up by a score of one nothing. Oh, and Hunt got a foot on it, tipped it back towards midfield, taken away by Clara Beach. Beach going to roll one down towards the left sideline. And out of bounds, throw in. Rios will take it. Throws it over the top of Erford. And OG going to get a throw here as Izzy, or excuse me, Melanie Hunt chested that one out of bounds as she tried to bring it down. Over out of Glendorf Beach. To the left, that's a nice pass to the corner. Again, it's going to stay in play. Erford not going to overplay it, and lets Woodmore send it out of bounds as Rios put her foot on it. Hazelman to throw. Back to Hazelman. Hazelman centering pass. It's set down and went just a little bit long off of Douglas. That one goes up high. Defensive header will send it away. Titans got the first foot on it, but then the second foot sends it back. Or looking for something in the counter as they send it over to the near sideline to Bowder. Bowder, right side. And the Titans will be the first to it. We'll just play this one out of bounds with 345 remaining. Quickly throw it back in to Hunt. Stop at your play here. Oh, there's a Titan player down all the way back here to our left. That's why they're going to stop the clock with 340 remaining. So as the ball went out of bounds, the officials were able to stop it. They didn't want to take away the advantage for Woodmore, but now the Titans will assess this. We'll take a timeout here on WOSN. Ottawa Glendorf leading and the Wildcats of Woodmore. one nothing with 3.40 remaining in the game. We're back after this. Back to Cross County Stadium in Tiffin here on WSN. Doug Jenkins alongside you. Ottawa Glendorf leading 1-0. Our 
Network scoreboard is presented by Structure Outdoor Ohio by Alts. Let Structure Outdoor Ohio bring your indoors out. The injured player for Ottawa Glendorf, Lily Hazelman, being helped off the field, uh, going over to the far side there. So this is a tight team that was beset by knee injuries. Their girls basketball team, I think, felt the result of that last year, too. Uh, just unlucky when it comes to that. We'll keep an eye on that. Looks like she's able to put pressure on both legs. Uh, but with 3.50 remaining, they did put 10 seconds on the clock. So they added 10 seconds in. 3.40 to 3.50. We'll see if Hazelman comes. I would imagine her tape may be done. We're back underway, though. There's the throw in. Titans again just trying to send everything away right now. Make sure they get a good foot on it. Don't want to miss hit anything here as working to get the ball there. Savannah Wrecker. Wrecker able to send it away, but a quick throw in for Woodmore. Down to three and a half minutes remaining. So across towards the top of the box. That one, Titans not able to get to. Rios gets to it. Raza Rios working to her right. Ball is dropped back. Hines with it. Hines trying to put, touch it back. That one sent into the goal box and into the hands of Emma Brinkman. That one hung up there off the foot of Melanie Hunt. That was set back out towards midfield. Woodmore with the ball. For possession. Aldrich sent it back towards midfield. Rios trying to work it out towards the sideline. Trying to find somebody in a blue jersey. She's going to drop it back where she gets it to Sage Perry. Aldrich was the first one to the ball, battling for possession and sent away. I think she may have clipped heads with Travis there. As you see Travis grab her forehead, play will continue. Down to two and a half. And now Ottawa Glendorf able to send that one long down the right side. It will bounce out of bounds. It will be a Woodmore throw, but they have to come out of their defensive half of the field now. The seconds continue to tick by. You see some tight fans on their feet. Willing uh, their Lady Titans on into the state semis if they can hang on to this one nothing lead. There's a long lob forward. And it will be headed back towards midfield by the Titan defense. Struggling with that one a little bit. Maya Herringhouse just set it out of play. Not the worst option there. Herringhouse gets it right back to her. She's going to send it out of play again. Minute 49, Rios. And that one was coming back to the ground quickly. Nice defensive header to send it away. That one out of bounds, throw in. Well, they didn't call that out of bounds. I would have thought it did. That's going to be a corner kick. That one got loose and away from Emma Brinkman. It's just going to be the second corner of the game for Woodmore, but it comes in a very dangerous part of this game with a minute 23 and counting. Woodmore trailing 1-0, and now they can run a set play. Now the problem is, can they get the ball to even sit where they want near the corner flag? Will they try and play it short? That's what they did last time. That's what they'll do here. There's a centering pass, and the Titans didn't send that very far. That one's going to be set in by Hunt. And coming up with it, we'll give them a break and a credit for a save on that one. And the Titans now inside 60 seconds, but that wind ratchets up even more. So Brinkman. Keeps that low, it was brought to the ground pretty quick, but it went out of bounds. Douglas couldn't quite set it down. Battle for possession over on the far sideline. It's sent out of bounds again. 36 seconds left. Woodmore near the top. Centering pass headed away. That's going to go out of bounds. Now down to 28 seconds left. The Wildcats to work it in quickly to Rios. Rios trying to get back to her left. Centering pass is deflected away. Now with 19 seconds left. Lob forward, defensive header sends it to the right side of the goal box. But Woodmore's first two at 10 seconds remaining. Now I think that there was a whistle. There in fact was a whistle, and that should do it. The whistle will bring things to an end as time will expire, and Ottawa Glendorf will move on to the state semifinals. Final score on the structure scoreboard, Ottawa Glendorf won. Zero for the Woodmore Wildcats. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this on WOSM.
Back on the WOSN Post Game Show, Ottawa Glendor victorious over Woodmore, one nothing. We're joined now by Titan coach Michelle Mag. Coach, first of all, congratulations. Thank you very much, man. It, it was such a fun game, right? I thought the girls fought really, really hard. It was a gritty game, and, and hustle plays win it, right? Credit to the kids. Well done. Well, definitely a game of two halves. How important was it for you to get that goal in the first half when you had the win that we're now facing in to uh, at your back? Yeah, we we won the coin toss. We decided we were going to be aggressive in that first half, right? Try to put an early one up. Um, it took us a little bit longer than we had wanted to in the first half, right? But it's set piece season, right? Um, you have to finish your corners at this point in the year, right? And, and credit Bree for playing the good ball in. And Carson put that in with her head. Well done. Well done by both those kids. Absolutely. What were the biggest challenges you faced outside of the elements today? Yeah, um, Woodmore's a fantastic team, right? Credit to them. They, they've had an excellent season. Um, forwards had a lot of speed, so we were worried about containing that speed up front. And then great shooters in the midfield, right? But I think our, our defense stood true to the test and, and found a way to limit their shooters and limit their impact. So well done. Well done by the defense yet again. Well, again, congratulations, Coach. Well-deserved victory. I appreciate it. Thanks, and go Titans. There you go. Ottawa Glendorf again victorious, 1-0. Carson. There we go, Carson Erford with that goal. one nothing with 8.32 remaining. That was all the damage that needed to be done, and the Titans will head to the state semifinals. I'm Doug Jenkins for WSN. For Jacob O'Neill as well, have a great day.